These are the 10 best smart trainers as rated by our team of expert testers here at Bike Radar. Before we get to the reviews, I'm going to run through what a smart trainer is, how they work, the different kinds available, and finally, how we did the test. If you want to skip this bit and jump to any review in particular, we put the time code down in the video description. And finally, thanks to our sponsor Swift for making this video happen. First up, what is a smart trainer? A smart trainer is a training tool that offers variable resistance like a normal indoor trainer, but with the added benefit of allowing the resistance and other parameters to be controlled by cycling apps such as Zwift. For example, when riding a virtual course on a smart trainer, if you begin to climb a hill, the resistance ramps up and you have to pedal harder, just like when riding outdoors. When doing group rides or a race on Zwift, the resistance gets easier when you're riding in a group, simulating a draft. If you're doing interval-based workouts, a smart trainer can also change resistance automatically to keep you in the required power zone. All you have to do is keep pedaling. Modern bike computers can also drive the smart trainer, allowing you to set the resistance at a predetermined wattage or to simulate an existing course. How smart trainers generate resistance varies by model, with many using a combination of a flywheel, magnetic resistance and an electric motor or brake. These are the key reasons to use a smart trainer, to make indoor riding much more fun and more productive. Next, how do smart trainers work? Smart trainers typically communicate wirelessly with devices via ANT Plus and Bluetooth. ANT Plus is cycling standard wireless frequency, so most bike computers, heart rate monitors, power meters, speed and cadence sensors and such work on ANT Plus. Bluetooth is native on smartphones and many tablets and computers, and most modern training accessories. Once paired with a device, apps like Zwift send signals to the smart trainer to increase or decrease the resistance as required, while the trainer sends power and other data to the app to propel your virtual avatar. All of this helps simulate the feeling of the natural gradient changes and group dynamics you get when riding in the real world, leading to a more fun and immersive indoor cycling experience. You can also run Zwift on Apple TV. This is one of the most affordable options if you want a big screen setup. So, what are the different kinds of smart trainer? Smart trainers fall roughly into two categories, wheel-on and direct drive designs. Wheel-on smart trainers look most similar to a normal trainer, where you clamp your bike at the rear axle and then tighten a roller against your rear tire for resistance. This design is, typically, lighter, cheaper and easier to store than a direct drive trainer, though that isn't always the case. On the downside, wheel-on smart trainers usually have smaller flywheels, which means a less realistic ride feel, and they also cause wear on your rear tire. More often than not, the power accuracy isn't quite as good as on direct drive models either. Direct drive trainers are sturdy units that effectively replace your rear wheel. The benefits of this design typically include increased stability, more accurate power measurement, and a better, more realistic ride feel. They are also usually quieter than wheel-on smart trainers. The downsides? Primarily, cost and weight. Direct drive smart trainers start around the 500 pound mark, but you can spend well over 1,000 pounds if you want the ultimate indoor training setup. As you go up the price scale, Things like ride feel, power accuracy, and noise levels all tend to improve. But as always, it's usually a case of diminishing returns. The more you spend, the smaller the improvements get. And finally, how did we test the trainers? When testing these units, we first considered the price of each trainer and what is included in the box. Adding on things such as cassettes, front wheel risers, or axle adapters can add a premium and are worth factoring in. We then considered how easy it was to set up the trainers and how easily they paired with Zwift. We then put the trainers through a series of tests on Zwift to assess the ride feel, the power accuracy, and how quickly they could respond to gradient changes and erg mode power shifts. With the ride testing complete, we then compared the power data from each trainer to that from on-bike power meters used simultaneously to check whether or not the trainer gives accurate readings on a consistent basis. Tax Flow Smart is a budget wheel-on smart trainer, which offers one of the cheapest entry points into interactive indoor cycling. 
In an age when pricier direct drive smart trainers take most of the plaudits, can this value option compete? In short, yes, it can. It's very easy to assemble and set up, although it doesn't ship with through axle adapters, only a 130mm quick release skewer. However, a front wheel riser block is included in the box, which is great to see at this price point. At just 8.49 kilos in weight, it's very easy to carry and move around. Connecting to Zwift presented no issues, though it did have a few data dropouts when using ANT Plus instead of Bluetooth. You need to get the roller contact with the tyre just right when calibrating the Flow Smart, which can take a bit of trial and error. Once you've completed this calibration though, you shouldn't need to do it again very often, providing you keep your tyre pumped up to the same pressure. With its relatively small 1.6 kilo flywheel, ride feel was the area I was expecting the Flow Smart would suffer. And while it's certainly not up there with the best, it's more than acceptable considering what it costs. With its low overall weight, it can't compete with direct drive trainers for stability either, but given its maximum power ceiling of 800 watts, the Flow Smart arguably isn't a trainer designed for heavyweight sprinters anyway. In terms of noise, I measured it at 68 decibels at 200 watts, which is actually pretty good. Once you start putting out more power, the noise and pitch levels do ramp up though, making it a little more intrusive. Tax claims the Flow Smart is accurate to within plus or minus 5%, and I generally found power accuracy to be good once warmed up. However, that accuracy does fall off at higher outputs or trainer resistances. In those kind of situations, accuracy was more like plus or minus 10%. However, it is consistent in how it reports power, meaning the inaccuracies don't overly affect your in-game experience if using a training app. The Tax Flow Smart offers a compelling entry-level option. Its modest spec is clearly designed to hit a price point, but it doesn't feel overly limiting in use, even for an experienced indoor rider like myself. The Saris M2 is a sub 500 pound wheel on smart trainer and is an ideal introduction to the world of interactive training. The legs here fold out for when it's in use and fold flat for easy storage. At nine kilos, it's not overly heavy to carry around either. The M2 will work with all the commonly found road and mountain bike axle sizes, though through axle adapters aren't included in the box. Applying the resistance unit against the tyre is a simple affair and it will also link up to your bike computer which allows you to operate things from your Garmin. Firmware is kept current on the M2 thanks to over-the-air updates via Bluetooth. Once plugged in, the M2 is ready to go. If you've ever used this classic style turbo, then there's a nostalgic familiarity when you jump on. The ride is solid without feeling overly harsh or uncomfortable and even out of the saddle throwing down the power, the trainer does a good job of holding everything without issue. When it comes to power, the M2 is able to handle 1500 watts at 20 miles per hour, which for most training instances and most mere mortals is enough. When it comes to climbing, this unit can simulate up to 15% gradients. In use, changes in resistance are relatively smooth and impressive for a trainer of this style and price. What is noticeably different here is the noise level. We recorded the levels on an iPhone app at 75 decibels at 20 miles per hour. Tire choice will affect this though. Power accuracy compared to our Garmin Vectors is good. Sarah suggests it's within 5%, but we found it to be within 3%. With the M2, Saris offers a good value interactive trainer. It's solidly built, it does the job well, and folds away for easy storage. The Elite Zumo is aimed at the budget end of the market. In fact, it's one of the cheapest direct drive smart trainers available from an established brand. It comes almost entirely assembled and is quite a large unit, especially in terms of height, but the legs do at least fold in for storage. Connecting to Zwift was quick and painless and I didn't experience any data dropouts during testing. Once up and running, the Zumo's ride feel is good. In-game gradient changes are replicated quickly and the 4.2 kilo flywheel makes for a relatively realistic riding experience. More expensive smart trainers, which often come with heavier flywheels, undoubtedly offer marginal improvements in ride feel, but for the price, the Zumo impresses. Thanks to the wide stance of its legs and its low center of gravity, the Zumo is also very stable under load. Given its price point, there are inevitably compromises in spec, 
mostly with the 1350 watt maximum power output ceiling and the 12% maximum gradient simulation. Both of these figures are relatively low compared to other direct drive smart trainers. However, whether most people, especially those looking for a smart trainer in this price bracket, need more than that is debatable. The noise levels were good, hitting 68 decibels at 200 watts during testing. That should be quiet enough for most households. Elite claims the Zumo is accurate to plus or minus 3%. Though in my testing, the power numbers consistently average slightly on the low side compared to my on-bike power meters. For example, at higher power outputs, the Zumo appeared to under-read by about 5%. So, unless you have a separate on-bike power meter, this isn't a trainer I'd recommend for serious swift racing. Everything was fine in terms of consistency though, so you could use the Zumo to follow a training plan and for general indoor cycling. Another thing I noticed was that cadence accuracy seemed to deteriorate a bit when the trainer was applying consistently high resistance. Under less challenging circumstances, cadence accuracy was generally fine, but this issue did appear during erg mode workouts as well. Fortunately, it didn't mess with the trainer's ability to hold a steady resistance level in erg mode though, and its responsiveness to big, quick shifts in power was very good as well. All things considered, Elite have done an impressive job in bringing a direct drive smart trainer to the market at this price point. For general indoor riding and those without a huge budget, there is a lot to like here. The price of the Tax Flux S instantly catches the eye. At under £550, it's one of the cheaper direct drive smart trainers on the market. But how does it stack up? Out of the box, the Flux S ships in two parts, so you will need to do some assembly but this only takes a few minutes. Once the legs are fitted though, they don't fold away for storage. This is fine if you have a dedicated paint cave, but otherwise it does take up a bit of space. The Flux S pairs seamlessly with Taxi's own app and works instantly with Swift. The first thing we noticed, which impressed us for a budget price direct drive smart trainer, is how stable the Flux S is. Mostly, this is down to its large footprint and substantial weight. The Flux S can simulate climbs of up to 10%. This might not sound like much compared to its bigger brother, the Neo 2T, which offers gradients of up to 25%, but for most, this will be more than enough. The lack of noise from the trainer also impressed us. We measured the Flux S at 60 decibels at 200 watts, which is unlikely to upset your long-suffering family in the next room. Tax claims that its power figures are within 3% accuracy, and that seemed to be the case when compared to our Garmin vectors. The general ride feel is good, and this is largely down to the 7 kilo flywheel. This is heavier than all of its similarly priced competitors and gives a lifelike ride that compares well to trainers costing double the price. The resistance feels good too, especially when climbing hills in Zwift. It's smooth and adds to the overall feel and enjoyment when training indoors. With the Flux S, Tax has delivered a very capable trainer that offers a great introduction to the world of smart trainers. It has a great ride feel, is easy to set up and use, and finally, is relatively affordable. Elite Suito is one of the brand's more competitively priced direct drive smart trainers. It's ready to use, out of the box, and comes complete with an 11 speed Shimano 105 cassette fitted as standard. This is worth noting as many similarly priced smart trainers don't include a cassette. It sits in the middle ground when it comes to weight at 14.5 kilos and when folded the unit is impressively compact, easily small enough to stick in a cupboard or under a bed. Setup is easy and hassle free and we had no issues connecting straight to Zwift. The wide legs and weight do a good job of providing a stable ride once you start pedalling, whether you're in the saddle or out. It's certainly up there among the best at the cheaper end of smart trainers. The Suito offers gradients of up to 15%. This is 1% less than the similarly priced Wahoo Kicker Core, but we're sure for most in this market, it won't be a deal breaker. As you'd expect from a direct drive trainer, the ride feel is good. The 3.5 kilo flywheel helps, but it's not as hefty as Wahoo's Kicker Core at 5.4 kilos or the Tax Flux S at 7 kilos. Resistance when climbing or accelerating felt natural without any sharp spikes and it offers up to 1,900 watts of resistance which is more than enough for most people. Sound levels are impressive here at 73 decibels at 20 miles per hour. The 
This is only slightly higher than the Wahoo Kicker Core, which is one of the quietest budget smart trainers available. With the Suito, Elite has produced one of the simplest and most user-friendly smart trainers on the market. It really is just plug in and play. The Core is Wahoo's mid-price smart trainer that sits between their top-end Kicker and the budget-priced Kicker Snap. It has all the essential functions you'd find on their top-end trainer, making it attractive if you're on a tighter budget or you want to spend on Wahoo's add-ons. It works directly with quick-release axles, but also comes with adapters for through axles in the box. However, there's no cassette or front-wheel riser block, so you will need to factor those into your budget. To help keep the price down, the legs are fixed, so you do have to bolt them on out of the box, and this makes it trickier to fold down for storage. The 5.4 kilo flywheel on the core isn't as burly as the 7.3 kilo one on the more expensive kicker. However, while the heavier flywheel is designed to help with a better ride feel, it's hard to notice a huge difference between the two in practice. Once in use, what is instantly noticeable and what stands out is how quiet the core is. This is thanks to the neat belt drive, which offers almost silent pedaling. In reality, the bike's transmission actually makes more noise. We were also impressed by how stable the setup is, even when you're out of the saddle working hard. Once pedaling, it was good to see that power outputs were similar to those found on our Garmin Vector power meter pedals. This was usually within a couple of percent at most, so we had no issues with the power accuracy. As you might expect, the core is compatible with Wahoo's Climb Indoor Gradient Simulator. Once paired, Climb will add physical gradient changes, hills and descents, as you ride. On a similar note, Wahoo also offers their Headwind Smart Fan if you have the cash to spare. The core is an impressive smart trainer, and for many, the price will be the big pull compared to its main competitors. It offers a great deal, even when compared to its more expensive big brother, the Kicker, and many will find it hard to spend the extra cash especially if you plan to splash out on extras. The Saris H3 is the brand's top-end interactive trainer that builds on from the popular H2. At a penny under £750, the H3 is very competitive price-wise at the higher end of the market. Reducing noise levels was one of the priorities for the new unit. This has been tackled with a new belt setup. The H3 also features a new drive mechanism and cooling system over its predecessor. It's good to see all the necessary adapters for all common axle types are included in the box. However, a cassette isn't included, so you'll need to factor this into your budget. Minimal setup is required, with just the legs to pull out. And we like that Saris has also included a front wheel riser block that sits neatly between the legs. If you're using a software package, such as Swift, everything just works, which makes life easy, even for the least technically minded. From the first pedal stroke, it's obvious how stable the H3 is. This is largely down to the wide legs and weight of the unit. The ride feel offered by the 9 kilo flywheel is up there with the best direct drive smart trainers and is especially good considering the price. Saris has sorted the occasional power spikes of the H2 via a firmware update. The result is certainly impressive on this unit and it works well, especially with terrain changes on Zwift. Power accuracy was also impressive, it was very close to our Garmin vectors, within 2% sometimes, but for the most part within 1%. The noise levels, or lack of them, is also impressive. It's far quieter than the H2, and at 20 miles per hour, we measured the levels at 61 decibels on an iPhone app. With the H3, Saris has made a big improvement over the H2. It feels great to ride, it's easy to set up and use, offers accurate data feedback, and best of all, they have reduced the noise levels. The Diretto XR is an update to Elite's Diretto X direct drive smart trainer, which built upon the success of its original Diretto. Priced at £824.99, it's a solid performer and also undercuts key competitors like the Wahoo Kicker, though there are some small trade-offs for this. Out of the box, it comes with everything you need to get started, including a cassette and riser block. You also get a long 2.5 meter power cable, so you shouldn't need an extension lead. And once plugged in, the trainer was quickly found by Zwift. At 15.8 kilos with a cassette installed, it's considerably lighter than something like the Wahoo Kicker as well, weighing in just over six kilos less. On the one hand, that's great for someone like me with cyclist arms, 
who finds moving heavy objects around the house a genuine struggle. On the other, very powerful riders may want a heavier, more substantial trainer. The Diretto XR can now simulate gradients up to 24%, up from 18% on the Diretto X. It also has a maximum power of 2,300 watts, though I suspect few of us would be getting even remotely close to hitting that number. The new, larger 5.1 kilo flywheel contributes to a good ride feel with a decent amount of inertia. It can't quite match the pricier Wahoo Kicker and its 7.25 kilo flywheel or the Saris H3 and its 9 kilo flywheel, but in practice the difference isn't likely to affect your indoor cycling experience that much. The resistance unit is quick to respond to changing gradients or ergmo power shifts, meaning what you see on screen is reflected by the trainer almost instantaneously. It's also pleasingly quiet, perhaps a touch louder than the kicker when you're working hard, but my drivetrain and the large fan both make more noise. Elite claims the internal power meter is accurate to plus or minus 1.5%. And from my testing, I found the Diretto XR tracks my on-bike power meters very well, and it returned consistent data on a day-to-day -day basis. Elite's Diretto XR is a quiet and reliable smart trainer with good ride feel and accurate power measurement. It has excellent specs for the money, and the value proposition is only improved by the inclusion of accessories like the cassette and riser block. Now in its fifth generation, the kicker looks similar to early models, but there are subtle changes worth noting. Initial setup couldn't be easier, with two fold-out legs for stability and height adjustable feet for uneven surfaces. There's also a fixed central main beam with adjustable height to accommodate a wide variety of wheel sizes from road through to mountain bike. The stability legs fold back into the center, making for easy storage and the unit packs down compact. In terms of wheel compatibility, the kicker works directly with quick release axles, but also comes with adapters for through axles in the box. It also comes with an 11 speed, 11 to 28 tooth cassette in the box, so you're ready to go straight away. We were also pleased to see a generously long power lead, which makes for an easy life and no need for extension cables. Once our bike was slotted in, the whole setup felt extremely stable, and this is true even when working hard out of the saddle. For those counting their top end power, the kicker works up to 2,200 watts, so there will be no problems there. We were impressed that the power data consistently tracked well with on-bike power meters in all circumstances too. We were also struck by how quiet the kicker is. It's almost silent and even quieter than its predecessor, so all you really hear is the hum of your drivetrain. Ride feel is great and better than previous generations. This is largely due to the larger flywheel, which now weighs 7.25 kilos. In fact, I'd go as far to say the kicker offers one of the best ride feels out there at the moment, especially under a thousand pounds. So while it doesn't come cheap, the Wahoo kicker is worth every penny and really is the gold standard of smart trainers. The second version of the Tax Neo looks similar to its predecessor, but now comes with a blue undercarriage, a purple light, and lots of internal changes to aid ride performance. At a penny under £1,200, the Neo 2T is right up there in terms of top performing trainers with a high end price tag to match. Setup is super simple. You just need to unfold the two legs and that's it. Unlike some smart trainers at this price point, Tax doesn't supply a cassette in the box, so you will need to buy your own and fit one instead. The unit itself weighs in at 21 and a half kilos, making it heavy to lug around, but this does help to give a truly stable platform. Unlike other smart trainers in this range, the Neo 2T uses a virtual flywheel. This means there's no belt involved and the cassette directly drives the motor unit that is used to apply resistance. This also means the unit can be used without plugging it into an electrical power source. Everything will work without a power source, apart from descent simulation when freewheeling. Once on the bike, the unit feels extremely stable, with a ride feel that is like no other. The Neo 2T can also simulate a wide variety of surfaces, including regular roads, cobblestones, gravel and dirt roads. Power output figures when compared with our Garmin Vectors were always similar and within 2%, so accuracy here is spot on. Similarly, cadence figures were very good too, thanks to the sensors built into the unit. It's also extremely quiet. 
measuring 61 decibels on an iPhone app. This is really impressive, and to be honest, just like other models in this test, chain noise from the transmission is louder than the unit. What makes the Neo 2T stand out above its competition is its use of a virtual flywheel. This makes training more realistic than ever before. Plus, the ability to use this trainer without a power source is great for outdoor race warm-ups and takes the Neo 2T to a new level. Even though it is at the very top end of our price range, if you can afford it, all of these things come together to make the Neo 2T an outstanding smart trainer. If you've made it this far, well done. Thanks again to our sponsor Swift for making this video possible. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the little bell icon so that every time we upload a new video, you'll get a notification.